the swing behind our back. Okay? So we want to get used to the anchors and holds. So we put the swing underneath our arms. So if it, hang, if it actually touches the other arms, it's not quite in the right place. We want to have a little bit of spacer between the swing and the skin. Okay, so what we do is we use our forearms to press the swing down. So if, it, if we have the swing towards the lower ribs, gravity is always going to do a good job and pull the swing back up. So the lower, the better, right? And then we can always adjust it if we need to. I'll show you how to do that. And then we lean back and walk our feet forward and come into a sumo squat. Perfect. So we're in a forearm press. Yeah. Forearm is um, pressing in. So your hands are in front. Yeah. Press it. There it is. Good. So once we have a forearm press, can you see how it's not really touching the underarms? It's kind of hooking our wings. So that's really where we want the swing. So we, we have these cute round mats that we use to define the space. So we're going to wiggle our toes forward until they touch. Wiggle forward for me. There we go. Perfect. Now this is our sumo squat, so feel like a sumo. <laughs> All right, lift your chest and, <laughs> and lower your hips. So you're hanging, so you're hanging, yeah. So we want to really let the spine hang. See if you can let your hips drop even more. Yeah, I'll stop saying it when I'm like, yeah, there you go. So we're usually like this, right? And then we're locked. But if we let our hips hang, it'll start to feel really good as we just shift from side to side. So thank you for being patient during that introduction. We'll just kind of drop in nice and slow and do a little wiggling from side to side. So at any time, if the other arms are feeling uncomfortable, as if they're not used to hanging by your underarms, but it actually is really good for the posture, we just have to get used to it, we're gonna press the legs straight. Okay, perfect. When we press, press the legs straight, we press our forearms in, and you can see how the swing is sliding down. We want it right behind the heart, right? If it goes up too high, like I said, when we come back down, it's gonna feel uncomfortable. So just kind of get used to that adjustment. That was perfect, now come back into sumo squat. And you can do that anytime that you need. And I'll probably cue you, because if we fall into what I call scarecrow, the arms will fall asleep and it doesn't feel that great. If this happens, it's okay. Just press back, keep your forearms there, see if you can wiggle it down. <coughs> Once it's in a comfortable spot, we come back in, okay? Let's bring our feet nice and wide. So this is the wide center, wide center. So find the wide center of the mat. Wide center, yeah. So I'll give you these different cues so we all can get on the same page. Good, so center wide, so move them back. Yeah, but wide, all the way to the edge. Yes, good, thank you. Wide center, so from here we can go from side to side. Now let's see if we can synchronize swim. Press back into the left, great, you guys look beautiful. And then press back into the right. If we don't synchronize swim, we're gonna have bumper cars, which is not the end of the world, but we wanna see if we can have plenty of space for everyone to practice, that looks great. And if there is um, a pillar or a wall or a person, we just are mindful, mindful of the space around us. Okay? Beautiful. Let's press straight back. Again, if you ever need a break, we come into our supported back bend. Let's open up our arms wide. Let's just take a moment to shake it out, shake it out. Sh jazz hands, it's called. Okay? So feel like a superstar. Shake, 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 shake. And then come back into forearm press. Beautiful. And sit back down. Really nice, guys. All right, just sway it out from side to side. Add a little swagger to the swing is what I call it. So we press back over to the right. Beautiful, press back over to the left. The swing is completely holding our weight, so this is actually an easier way to come into a lunge than it would be on the ground, right? So you're still getting the openness of the hips, but you're not dropping all of your weight into your legs. Okay, so usually what happens is you can go further into back bends and inversions and lunges and all those poses in yoga that are really hard by using the swing instead of it being something that actually is um, more difficult. You know, most people are intimidated by it, like I said, even if they're curious. Let's go ahead and stay here and pulse to the right in our lunge. See if you can press your hips towards me. So I call it making a wish when you're splaying your hips forward and that starts to open a little bit deeper. Don't worry about the knee right now. Sometimes in yoga, we can allow the knee to come over the ankle, but since our weight is being supported, it's okay to just pulse there. And so what I'm gonna do is give you poses that you can do that would normally be like less accessible in a yoga class and make them easier with the swing. So everything is gonna be safe, everything's gonna be relatively comfortable as much as possible. Press back, get the swing nice and low. And then let's go ahead and bend left knee. Let's see if we're coming into a side lunge and just staying there for a breath. 
feel our tight hips, our ooh-la-la. This part of the body hardly ever gets this much opening. The hips hold a lot of energy. So we just want to take our time opening that up. Beautiful, guys. Press straight back. So go ahead and open up again one more time for Superstar. Shake it out. Best hand. Shake it out. Shake it out. And then what we're going to do is use our fingers to interlace behind the back of the neck. Flare out the elbows wide for chillaxing arms. And now we can initiate our back bend for the upper thoracic. We're on like a V shape. So we're pulling gently on the back of the neck to let there be more length in the cervical spine. So we're not trying to like pull the head off the body, just a gentle millimeter of space will make all the difference. And then if we want, we can add the bent knee. So bend your left knee, bring your left elbow over. Push straight back, bend your right knee. knee bends, get a nice big side body stretch, beautiful guys, a straight back, and knee bends. How does that feel? Good. Good. Guys look amazing. So if we can do this, we, we're pretty much set for class. <laughs> it's going to get, you know, some poses will get a little bit more complicated, but you will always give you a real simple version. This is such a great real way to stretch the connective tissue and start to get into some of that tightness and stiffness that lives in the back of the heart. So we're going to come back through our wide arms and then forearm press. It's like we're swimming, right? I do all these moves where we're like swimming it out. So really extending our arms and then we can come back to our sumo squat. Okay? Now the underarms won't like it to be here for a really long time. So whenever you're ready to come out, we're going to walk back and come up. Okay? You just notice this feels really different. Because we've been doing this for four hours already, so mm. you can imagine. So we're like, we'll take a break anytime. But what I'm going to show you is how to come into cocoon. Is I want to show you how to come into the um, rest pose. So you can spread the swing out and get it underneath your butt. Okay, so you're going to be on the inside of the taco. That makes sense. There's an inside and an outside to the swing. Okay, so grab the front lift, get a good handful, get it down, stretch it out to the knees. Make sure you have a handful. Yeah, you got to stretch it out to your knees. So get in there. Yeah, that's better. A little bit more. <laughs> get a big handful. <laughs> handful. <laughs> Two handfuls. Yeah, and then you want to make sure there's enough to sit back in there. All right. Boom. Oh. It's super comfortable, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we get our head in there, too. I know it's tempting to get the head out, but actually it's way better to get it. All right. <laughs> this, is, this is why everybody was so relaxed when you came in, because they put them in cocoon. They were like, oh, it's the best. So this is when everyone falls in love with the swing. They don't love it when it's underneath their armpits. This is when they're like, oh, this is better. But let me show you how to put the leg loops on from here, okay? So the leg loops expand. You can stretch them from the arch of the foot all the way up to the calf. <coughs> so we're going to start out like this. Okay? So these are our, like, stirrups, right? So our head is in. Our hips are completely supported. Our arms can be crossed over our chest, giving ourselves a hug, or they can just be relaxed on our lap. And just know that this is 100% welcome if at any point we're doing something and you feel like you need a break. I want you to feel like you can come into your cocoon and just take a little rest. We have plenty of time to get a full practice in. And then at the end, like I said, I like to give you a little taste. This is what we do for final relaxation. We actually let ourselves float <coughs> Excuse me, and get a really nice long meditation in the swing. So what I, I want us all to bring our hands to our hearts. Okay, I want us to just feel the intensity of the day and of the weekend and all of the shifts and changes that are happening, all of the energies that have been stirred in the last couple months, and I want us to feel like we can come back home to this place in ourselves. So some people are marching, other people are swimming, other people are swinging. Everybody's just doing their own version of what it would feel like to be empowered. And let us use this swing practice to feel like we're coming back to our core. And the word core comes from the cur, which actually means heart. So our courage comes from our heart. Let's return to this place whenever we need to and harness the energy, pull the energy back in towards our center. Feel that connection. 
connection to the self. Whatever that means, it doesn't even have to be a physical practice or exercise, it could just be an intention of being more embodied, more alive and more present in this body. And in this practice, we give thanks for the breath, we give thanks for our being, and we praise and we thanks for this body. Whatever it is, just welcome what it has to offer. It's intelligence, it's the information, the intensity, all the feelings. Just let it be present in the practice today. And I do call this aerial yoga play, so we have an opportunity to explore and experience our bodies in a new way. So we're just going to play with it. You know, we just want to see if we can create a new relationship to the body using the swing to support us. And let the swing hold you, let it hug you. It's embracing you, it's here to help you. It's here to allow you to go deeper. And as we deepen in our personal practice, it allows us to show up in the world in a bigger way. Just kind of consider for you personally, how would you like to show up in the world in a bigger way? And invite that expansion stretching our imagination as well as our limbs to hold a new vibration, to hold a new vantage point. My greatest gift that I've gained from the swing is changing perspective. You know, so we shift perspective by changing our vantage point and turning things upside down and seeing if there's a new way of looking at things, if there's a new way of approaching things. And when the whole world seems upside down and backwards, then we should reverse it and go into our own inversions and our own practice to really get some clarity and get some vantage point. So I would invite everybody to like set their own intention for tonight. Tonight is just a special night and so <clears throat> I thought it was good to really bring a little bit more intentionality and a little bit more focus into how we're using this way. And every time is completely different I do like to end with a long guided meditation, and I also like to end sometimes with just silence and just dropping into the stillness and the sea of consciousness. So we'll see how that goes at the end, depending on what, what energy is being called forth. I just invite you to gather more breath, gather, gather more awareness into your being, and gather more gratitude for your body. Okay, and from here, all we're gonna do is stretch our arms up overhead. Okay, so we expand that out. Just let it start to emanate out from the center of the heart space. And we're just gonna gently rock from side to side, shifting, let our eyes be really soft and receptive to the light. I know these lights are pretty bright. We'll get a dimmer switch as soon as possible. <laughs> but for now, let's just enjoy that gentle rocking motion from side to side. Pushing one foot down and then the other foot down. And just enjoy the sensation. We're rocked and cradled as children. And then as adults, we hardly ever get that experience again. So let it feel good to stretch, to expand, to open. Take your time just emerging from the swing after a little bit of respite. I encourage you guys to take a break, have a sip of water, use the restroom, whatever you need. This is your practice, so take care of yourself. Okay. <laughs> You're like, okay, now we're happy. We showed up. <laughs> so we could do this for an hour and a half. I've done it before, and it would be like, oh, that was great. Like I was. <laughs> we do deep restorative and therapeutic practices with the swing, as well as dynamic strengthening and acrobatic. I mean, it is so uh, multi-dimensional in its range. It's really incredible that one piece of equipment could work with an 